Hallelujah. Well, thank you all for being with us tonight again. Hallelujah. Thank you to everybody online who's watching us. Uh, so glad that you can be with us. Uh, we are here <laughs> one day. You know, it's just by the grace of God that I'm even here right now. Uh, it's been one heck of a day, but the Lord got me through it. Amen. Amen. And uh, I think I got home probably like half an hour before service started. And, <laughs> and I've had to set all this stuff up and get through it. But praise God. Got myself cleaned up a little bit. Everybody say praise God. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, so praise God. So let's get into what the Lord has for us today. And uh, as you know, of course, we're talking about this new identity. And, uh, and it is something that uh, we've been pounding, pounding, pounding in our hearts and in our minds. And, uh, and I've, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. Um, and uh, I believe we're coming to the end of this. But though, uh, I've, I, this might be our last one. I believe that uh, the Lord may have us move on to other things. But, uh, but I think it's good that we're spending a lot of time here. And, uh, and I don't know about you, but uh, I believe, well, I'm believing for you. That the Lord is ministering to your heart, and He's uh, He's helping you to begin to realize and to understand and change some wrong thinking, and uh, and I believe the reason, one of the main reasons, the Lord is having us work on this, spend so much time on this, is because for many of us, our past hinders us. Our past, uh, what we've gone through, the things we've experienced, all those things, they keep us from moving forward. And they keep us and they hinder us from entering into the better and the promises of God. Uh, you know, a lot of times we think, well, I'm just not worthy. I've screwed up. I've messed up. Uh, God's not going to answer my prayer. God's not going to, you know, he's not going to do anything for me. And, you know, and you, you would think, why, why would he? Why would he? If you don't know this, if you don't know your identity, then you would have no reason to believe God for anything. Because why would God answer anything for you? Because for, you've been... You've made mistakes, right? You've screwed up. You've sinned. You've messed up. Uh, so if you don't know that, if you don't know who God made you to be, if you don't know that God made you the righteousness of him in Christ, if you don't know the standing that God has made to get put you in with him, then you have very little expectancy to receive anything from God. Because you're looking at yourself from, from, the, from your failure standpoint rather than what Jesus has done for you standpoint. And, uh, and I think that, uh, uh, you know, a lot of times uh, it just seems like uh, when, we, when we carry a lot of guilt and when we carry a lot of shame and we carry a lot of condemnation, it seems like we can only go to a certain point and then we're stopped. And then we can't go any farther. And it, and it seems like, uh, and that's what I believe the Lord wants us to get free from, and to can actually sh shake off that guilt and that shame, get rid of that condemnation, and begin to live free. Amen. To get, begin to live free and the freedom that God had purchased for you. And sometimes, you know, it's like, you know, being inside a prison door. You know, we're inside a prison, and Jesus Christ has opened the door, and we're free to walk out. We're free to, to, to get out of that, walk out of that prison and go walk in freedom. But because we're, we're missing a lack of knowledge, we actually were staying inside the prison. We're, you know, we're, we're living inside the prison that we've been free from because we don't understand that Jesus has set us free. And I'm talking about guilt and shame and condemnation, our past, our, our mistakes, our failures. I'm talking about those things. And, uh, and when, we, when we use those, uh, those failures as a point of our identity, then we're even worse. Right? Then we're even worse off. Then we're even in more bondage than we need to be. And when actually it's not the truth. When the truth is that God has done something new. Amen. And we've been talking about that. And I believe the Lord is saying to us this time that it's time to leave the past behind. It's time to leave the old things behind. It's time to, to let the old things that have passed away, let them be passed away. Let them be in the past and pick up and walk in the new things. Hallelujah. God has brought new things for you. He has brought it to you in Christ Jesus. It's time to stop neglecting them and to start living in them. Hallelujah. Because in the new things is freedom. We don't, we don't think that. We think that in the old thing is where I know that's where my, my safety is. That's where my identity is. You know, if I let go of my past, I'll lose my identity. 
And it's actually that identity that holds you in bondage. And so we don't realize that, hey, and that's, that's the lie of the devil. It's tell you that who you used to be is the better you. Right? Living in the past, living the way you used to live, that was the good times. Those were the better times. But no, that's the lie. The lie, the lie, that it, the truth is that in Christ, in the provision that he has made for you, the new identity that he has for you, that's where your satisfaction of life is found. Amen. That is where your joy is found. That is where your peace that your heart is longing for. That's where it's found. It's found in the new things. And it's not found in the old things. And, uh, <clears throat> amen. So, and uh, I know that we have talked a lot about the old things and that they are gone. And I know for some people it's hard to let go. It's hard to let go of the old things. And, uh, and I struggled with this quite a bit. You know, I know it's not every one of you knows my past, but I, I have a past. We all have a past, right? Yeah. We all have things that we've done that we're not happy, that we wish you wouldn't have done, right? So, so we're not judging anybody, right? We're not throwing stones, right? We all needed deliverance. We all needed uh, saving, right? Yeah. We, you know, it, it just doesn't matter. So there's no point in comparison or judging or condemning or anything like that stuff because we all needed to be set free. But uh, one of the things that I did struggle with was a lot of the stupid things that I did when I was younger. Uh, when I, you know, you drink and get drunk and do dumb things and say dumb things, you hurt people, people hurt you, and uh, it's just nasty business all around, amen? So, uh, but one thing that I did is when I came, when I first started coming back to the Lord, and I was dealing with all this guilt and this shame and this condemnation, one of the things that the Lord led me to do is to get in a time of prayer, and just, uh, and I just closed my eyes, and I, I believe I was being led by the Holy Spirit to do this, and I was close my eyes and I just imagine in my, in my mind to put all these things on a table. And so I was kneeling there on the, on the, the ground praying to the Lord and uh, I just felt the sense of the Holy, Tear, the Holy Spirit tell me, okay, put everything on that table. Right? Everything that you feel guilty about, put it on that table. Right? I'm in my, in my, in my heart and in my mind. Right? And so I'm saying, just put it on that table. What is it that's holding you down? What is it that's holding you in bondage? What is it that, that's causing you agony? What is it that's causing you that condemnation? Put it on that table. And so I would think about all the things that I did. Oh, that was pretty stupid. I want to put that on the table. Right? Or uh, this is, this is uh, I did this and I'm not really happy about it and I'm going to put that on the table. It's causing me grief. All right? it's, ca it's a weight for me. It's a hindrance to me. And so I put it on the table. And so I just went through all these things that I was not proud of that I did or things that people did to me. And I put it all on that table. And, uh, and I just, and it's like the Holy Spirit just said, okay, is that it? So I went back, you know, and I went, look for more, right? I put more on the table. And uh, I was just looking for everything, anything that would hinder me, anything that would stop me from moving forward, I put it on that table. And then I, I you know, I was, I was visualizing this in my mind. And then I, I had nothing to do with it, but I saw an arm just come in and just sweep that table clean. It just like it was like everything on that table just went off the you know you just swept it all clean, amen. So that what is he saying? It's no more. And when I did that, I just felt a release. I just everything just lifted off of me, and all that guilt, all that shame, all my past, it was finally done. It was over. It was all it was all gone. The Lord had finally, He had taken it away, amen. He has swiped and He swept swept the table clean, amen. And we see this here. Uh, it's actually biblical, uh, biblical. Here, uh, we see this here, Philippians 3, verse uh, 13 through 14. It says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And so I would encourage you, if you're struggling with those things, with guilt and shame and condemnation of your past, go before the Lord with it. Present it to the Lord. Give it to Him. Put it before Him. Amen. So He can sweep it. Amen. He can, he can get it out. He can get it out of your heart and out of your mind, and He can sweep it off the table. Amen. Old things passed away. Hallelujah. That's how the Lord views it. He views it as old things that passed away. And if they're old things and they're passed away, then why are we living in them? Why are we thinking about it? Why are we meditating on it? I mean, another thing that we can do is you can get a sheet of paper and you can write all those things down that you may be feeling condemned about 
or you may be feeling a little guilty about, or all those things, you know, the devil loves to do this to me. He loves to play the, the rewind, the, the video of all the embarrassing things that I've done. Anybody else have that? And it's just like over and over and over. And then, you know what? I put those on the table. Put them on the table. Or write them down on a sheet of paper, right? And then bring them before the Lord. And then also bring this verse before the Lord. Here it says, it is, the Lord speaking here, it says, it is I who sweep away your transgressions for my own sake and remember your sins no more. Other translations say, is I, even I am he who sweeps away your transgressions. Right? I, he is the one who does it. He is the one who will not remember your sins anymore. Amen. So if God's not remembering it, why do we need to remember it? Amen. And that's not only our sins, our mistakes and our failures, but also the sins and mistakes and failures that other people have towards us. And it's, it's forgiveness. Letting those things go. Amen. Getting rid of them. Amen. Because they're only a hindrance to you. They're only going to hold you back and you're not going to be able to, to, you know, you're not going to be able to walk in the fullness of what God has for you. So letting go of the past. And what do you do with that sheet of paper? Is you write that scripture down, bring it before the Lord, then light it on fire. Right? Safely, of course, but light it on fire or put it in a shredder. And that is you signifying that it's over. It's done. It's no more. You're releasing your past. You're releasing the condemnation. You're releasing the guilt. You're releasing it all. Amen. You're releasing it all into God's hands. And God says it's done. Amen. I know we talked a lot about that, but we need to hear it. We need to hear it because, you know what, you know, like I said, the devil brings those things back up to you, but now you have something to, to stand on, right? Now you have something to say, hey, you know what, that's done, that's over. Old things have passed away, devil. That, that is just, all it is is a memory, right? All it, that's all it is. I'm not going to watch your videos. You go somewhere else with that junk, amen? I'm not going to listen to it anymore. I've been set free, amen? You've been set free. You've been set free from your past, amen? amen. So there's no reason to live in it. No reason to live in it. That's right. All right. Amen. All right. Praise God. Now, we've been going over this new identity uh, that came through the new creation, through what Jesus Christ has done. Uh, what actually we should say, what the Father has accomplished through Jesus Christ. We talked. We've been talking about this new creation that comes through faith in Jesus Christ, and how that God has done a change in us, and that. We are now called to the new things. We are called to the new things and not to live in the old things. And one of the new things that we've been called to was righteousness. We've been called to holiness. We've been called to worthiness, hallelujah, before God. Right standing before God. And we also, we've talked about how now we are literally spiritual, literally spiritual children of God. That we have been born from above. Right? We are actually, uh, Jesus Christ in John 3.3 in 3, the Young's Little Translation says that we are born from above. Hallelujah. We are born from God, from the Spirit of God. And now we talked about how we have a new life. Right? A new life. A new life came the new identity. That means the old things, the old identity is gone and now we have a new identity. And all the rights and the privileges that come with it. And we see here, and we looked at here in Galatians 5, verse 22 and verse 23, we talked about the fruit of the Spirit. And we talked about how this was the identity, but this was not only our identity, but this was our nature. This was God's nature, and this was the nature that God made us a partakers of. Amen. It says that in 1 Peter, that we become partakers of the nature of God. And the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith. I finally found a translation that said faith. Not faithfulness, but faith. <laughs> faith, uh, gentleness, self-control, and against such, there is no law. And so we discovered, we, we, uh, we discovered last week that love was our nature. Joy was our nature. Peace was our nature. Patience was our nature. Kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, self-control. These were the things of who we are. This was our nature. This was our identity because this is God's nature and this is God's identity. Hallelujah. And so we are now partaking of that nature. And so we can begin to confess about ourselves that I am a love-natured person. I am a joyful-natured person. I am a peaceful-natured person. I am a patient-natured person. I am a kind, good, faith 
natured person. Amen. You know, you were born to believe. You were born to believe God. That's what you, that is. You are a believer. Amen. You are a believer and God put faith in you. And so you are, you, that is what you do. Faith is what you do. Hallelujah. That's your MO. I don't always say MO. In my mode of operation. I don't, you guys are probably tired of hearing that, but it helps me. It helps me uh, to say, yeah, that's what I do. That's just my nature. And you may be saying to yourself, wait a minute. That doesn't, no. You don't know me, brother. You, know, you don't know, man. No. I, I struggle. I have a hard time. Well, you know what? We all struggle a little bit, right? We all have to fight the good fight of faith. But you know what? It doesn't change who you are. Amen. You, you are a faith-natured person. You were born to believe. Believing is what you do. Hallelujah. Yes. Believing God is what you do. Glory to God. Same thing with joy. Same thing with peace. All of those things. You were born with those things. And you were born to live in those things. Amen. And also, you know, we talked about how, uh, uh, and, and we talked about how we grow in these things, right? So we're not perfect right away, right? So when we, for me at least, when I look and read and say, and say stuff like that, you know, I'm thinking perfection. Right? I got to be perfect in joy. I got to be perfect in peace. I got to be perfect in faith. But no, no, we grow in these things. It is, it is a growth process. Amen. And so also what we're going to get to today is, you know, last time we talked a little bit and we focused on faith, but today we're going to focus on love. Love. That you are a love-natured person. Love is what you do. Amen. Loving people and loving God is what you were born to do. Amen. That is the biggest, and, uh, and uh, this is what God has created you to be. He has created, he has put, he has invested all of this in you. <laughs> Amen. Is your, is your mind messing with you yet? Is your, is your mind saying, yeah, right. Amen. If it's in there, I don't know it, but praise God, it's in there. Amen. You just haven't discovered it yet. You just haven't found out yet. Hallelujah. And when you do, you'll be surprised. Amen. You'll be surprised what's in you. Hallelujah. Now, we don't always, you know, no, because we have it in us, we don't always walk in it because we have the flesh, right? We have the flesh that wars against the spirit and the spirit that wars against the flesh. And we're, these two are always in contention. And if we're not built up and we're not having the revelation and we're not having the fellowship, we're getting to that later, with God, then the flesh is going to rule. And the flesh is all you're going to see and the flesh is all you're all going to know. And you're going to miss out everything that God has invested inside of you. But one day, when you wake up, amen, when we spend that time and we fellowship with God, we begin to discover what's in us. We begin, that there's some, we begin to discover that there's something in us, greater than us, that it doesn't seem like it's of us, but it is, man, it is powerful. It is, it is something that compels. It is something that drives. It is something that motivates you to love. It's something that motivates you to have faith. It's something that motivates and strengthens you to, to keep going, amen? To, to have peace, to have patience, to have kindness, to have all of those things. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, uh, so this love that we're talking about today, for many of us, uh, you know, and it took me a long time to get this revelation. So, you know, if... I'm not throwing stones, okay? I'm, I, I always, whenever I preach, I always include myself, all right? So I don't want anybody to think that I'm elevating myself or anything, and that's absolutely not. I mean, it, I, it took me years, years and years to get this. And so, uh, <clears throat> but what we've done, what I've used to do, and I think what a lot of Christians do, is that we, we love, when we, just, when we think about when we have to love, we think we have to love from a sense of duty, from a sense of obligation. Right? We have a knowledge about love. We hear a sermon on love. We feel a little bit condemned, right? And then we go out and we try to perform, right? And we, and we try to uh, do it as a sense of duty. I love because I have to love. Right? I love because God said to love. And even though I don't want to love, and even though I feel like slapping people, I, wanna, I have to love, so I'm just going to love, right? And so we, we do, it out of a sense of, of, uh, do it out of a sense of obligation and, and duty, but what if we changed our thinking a little bit? And what if we changed our believing a little bit? And we began to believe that God put something in us. That there's something greater within us. And we began to love not out of a sense of duty, but we began to love out of a sense of identity. That that is your identity. I love because that's who I am. Amen. I love because I'm a child of God. 
Amen. I love because I have the spirit of God in me. He's empowering me and strengthening me to love. Hallelujah. Amen. And here we see this in... Uh, uh, the Apostle Paul actually talks about this in his letter to the Corinthians. He says, for the love of Christ compels us. The love of Christ compels us. Because uh, we judged us that if one died for all, then all died. So what is he saying? He's saying the love of God, the love of Christ in me compels me. It motivates me. It encourages me. It strengthens me. And we're talking about a strong desire. That's what compels means, a strong motivation, a strong to desire to do, amen, to do, to love the way God loves. And I know we think a lot of times of ourselves that I can't love like how God loves. I, there's no way. Well, in our flesh, and our fallen bodies, probably not, right? Amen. But God still invested that love in you so that love can begin to grow. That love can begin to flourish and love becomes visible on the outside because that is what this world needs more than anything else. They need love. They need to know the love of God. They need to know how much God loves them. Hallelujah. And God has invested it in us. And here I want to take a look here at 1 Corinthians 8 verse 1. It says, Now concerning what you wrote about food offered to idols, it is true, of course, that all of us have knowledge. As they say, such knowledge, however, however, puffs up a person, puffs a person up with pride, but love builds up. So looking at this scripture, when we look at a mature Christian, we've said this before, when you think about a mature Christian, what comes to your mind? A spiritually mature Christian, is it how much knowledge they have? How much they know about the word of God? How much of the word of God they have memorized? Is that a truly uh, mature Christian? No. Is it how much faith? I'm sorry? How they act? Okay. How much faith they have? Is that, is that really, is that, because we, especially us here in the faith circles, we think if someone has a lot of faith, that they're a spiritually mature person, right? And we think if someone knows a lot about the word of God, that they're a spiritually mature person. But the word of God tells us a different story. The Word of God says you can have knowledge. You can have faith. 1 Corinthians 13, right? right. I, if I have faith to move mountains, what, but not, have not love, what am I? Nothing. nothing. You're nothing. Hallelujah. So we see here that the Word of God begins to tell us that love is the greatest. Love is the greatest. Meanwhile, these three remain faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And so we look at the church today. What is our number one priority? Is it love? Just asking questions. Is it love? Are our hearts set to love? Is, is, love our, is, is love our top priority priority in life? Is it to love God, to love God and to love people as God loves us? Or are we chasing the promises of God? Is it all about us receiving? All about us receiving the things of God? Again, I don't want to throw guilt and shame and condemnation. I just want to show there's opportunity for growth. There's opportunity for change, right? Hallelujah. That the Bible says that this is the greatest. The greatest thing is love. And this is what God wants us to, wants the most out of us is to learn to grow and to live in this love. Love is the greatest thing. If you want to know a, spirit, a truly, spiritually mature Christian is one who loves with the love of God, who knows the love of God for him, and he loves other people with the love of God. Amen. That means he's not judgmental. That means he's not, you know, he's not unkind, like all the fruits of the Spirit. You know, in Galatians 5, verse 19, verse 21, lists all the fruits of the flesh. That's right before he lists the fruits of the Spirit. So the person who, who loves with the love of God and has, has made this a priority in their life and has said, okay, Lord, this is what you have called me to do. This is what you have made, you have made me to do. This is why I was born in this life is to love, love, love. This is my number one priority. And I need to make changes myself. Amen? I mean, we all need to make changes to make this the number one priority. And, you know, and really, and the reality is, once we get this, everything else falls in place. Faith falls in place. Faith is easy. Once you know the love of God for you, faith is cake, is a cakewalk. Amen. Once, you, once you're persuaded of the love of God for you, 
Amen. You're not going to be worried about protection, right? You're gonna, you know you're safe. You know, you, you know God is looking out for you. You know God is, is, is uh, taking care of you. And you won't question things like healing because you know the love of God. You know that he loves you, that he provided for you, and you won't be looking at other people's failures or other people's who did not receive. You will be looking at the love of God. You'll be looking at him because you know him and he has confessed and he has confirmed and he has testified to you through his word and through his spirit that those things are for you. Those things are for you. He provided them for you through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we won't be looking at other people. We will be looking to God. What does he say? What does God have to say? As if we live off of other people's experiences, we will never enter into the promises of God. We will never enter into what God has for us. We have to find out for ourselves. If you're not sure about one of the promises of God or the provisions of God, take it to God. Find out for yourself. Amen? Because, you know, if, if some people you're just not going to listen to. You just, you know, I have, I have people that I'm not going to listen to. All right? Just for whatever reason. But I have a question about the things of God. I take the word of God and I go to God with it. I say, God, is this you? Should I even be messing with this? Should I even be, play, should I even be playing with it? All right? Amen. I find out for myself whether it's of God or not. And then once you find out for yourself, nothing can shake you. You know, what other people go through, whatever people, whenever the people fail, you say, well, I don't know what's going on there, all right? There's, I don't know their hearts. I don't know what they were believing. I don't know if they were believing at all, right? You don't know. You don't know what's going on in their hearts, but I do know my God, amen? I do know my God. I do know his word, hallelujah. I know he's faithful. I know he's true, hallelujah, yeah. amen. Praise God, hallelujah. All right, so we're not going to go too long tonight. Because I'm just way off script here, um, but uh, that's good, you know. That's, I don't, I don't think I have, I don't think the Lord has a problem with that. I hope not. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, so for us as a church, we've majored in grace, we majored in faith, but uh, and we majored in the promises of God. But we taught, we're taught very little about love. And I think that's why a lot of the church is is has seems judgmental, seems critical, seems condemning. A lot of, how many of you would agree that seems to be a lot of the church? It's been that way in the past. Uh, because we haven't talked a lot about love. And when we do talk about love, we talk about it in a condemning manner. Kind of like, you're not walking in love. You better shape it up. You, know, you better do better. You know? You know, trying to get you under guilt and shame and condemnation to try to get you to act out in love. And uh, all it does is it, just, it changes you for like a week. And then you're right back to doing whatever you were doing, right? So, so we want to grow. Amen. We want to come to God and say, Lord, I know this is your priority for me. And so I want to make it a pri priority in my life. And I want to learn how to do this. Amen. And, so, and it's not something that you just decide you're going to do. Right? Just one day I'm going to, I'm going to walk in love. Now, it's something you, as, you, as you get with God and as you partner with God, he will show you. You know, the word of God says the anointing teaches us. And so there is an anointing that will teach you to love. Amen. Did you know that? That there is an anointing that will teach you how to love. It's like, uh, how many of you have ever been in the presence of God and you, and you sense the anointing on you and you spent strengthened? Right? You, you spent, you know, you, you've been, maybe you're having a rough week and you've been empowered, you've been strengthened something on the inside of you. It's that same kind of anointing that will empower you and strengthen you to love as he loves. And as you walk in that anointing, that anointing teaches you what to do, what to say, how to act. Amen. And that was one of the greatest things I discovered at Ramah. Is, uh, as, and, it, as, and you get it as you abide and you fellowship with your father. And I think to myself, this is me, I'm talking to me here. We have tried too much to do too much on our own. And we have not fellowshiped with our father. Our ability, our ability comes with our fellowship with our father. Our ability to believe comes with our fellowship with our Father. Our ability to walk in love comes with our fellowship with our Father. Our ability to walk in joy and peace and all the fruits of the Spirit, they come with fellowship. They come with abiding in the vine. And we talked about that last week. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. So we need to get into the presence of God. And we need to allow that anointing to teach us. Amen. We need to allow that anointing to guide us, to strengthen us, to give us the ability to walk in love as God loves us. Amen. That's the only way we're going to do it. If we try to do it from our soul or from our flesh, 
be frustrated and be discouraged and we'll say, well, forget this, I can't do it. You know, you, just, you say, give up, right? Amen. But as you get in his presence, and always team up with him. That's, that seems to be my new, my new word. You know, team up with the Holy Spirit. Whatever you're doing. Whatever you're doing with God. Whatever you're facing with God, team up with him. And say, Lord, all right. You know, we don't have to sit and impress God. Right? We don't have to sit down and say, okay, you know, God is watching us, you know, waiting for us to perform. No, God wants to get in there and he wants to help you. Amen. Not only does he make the provision, and not only does he manifest the provision, but he helps you stay in faith. He helps you endure so he can bring the provision to pass in your life. Amen. Amen. He helps you through. He does everything. I mean, I mean, he helps you with, I mean, we still have the obligation to make the choice. We still have to walk in faith, right? We still have to fellowship. We still have to do those things. But it, he is the one that enables us to do it. He, not only he provision, the performance, and then the enablement. He does the provision, he does the performance, and he does the enablement of us to do it. Amen? And if we want the enablement, we have to abide in the vine. There's no other way to get the enablement without abiding in the vine. As Jesus said here, without me, you can do nothing. With nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So if we want to grow in love, how do we do it? We get in his presence. Amen. We spend time with his word. You spend time with uh, uh, fellowshipping with the Lord. Uh, we pray for it. Ask for it. Say, Lord, help me. Help me. Give me this anointing. Give me this strength that you that you're uh, that you you talk about in your Word. That you empower me. Amen. That you empower me. Help me. To, help me get there. Help me get. Help me, help me grow in this, Lord. Hallelujah. And He will. And He will. Amen. And um, there's a book. Uh, we have it here. I will probably get it uh, out there one of these days if you're interested. Uh, there's a book, a good book by Kenneth E. Hagan called Love, the Way to Victory. And that's a good way to get started. It just talks about love. And uh, it's an anointed book. I believe absolutely it's an anointed book. And uh, it will start feeding your heart on this love. So read that book. I would challenge you to read that book in a, a fellowship. with. Read it together with the Holy Spirit. Right? Whenever we read those things, we read them and say, All right, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? What, what do I need to learn from this when I'm reading? Amen. And also another good book you can read is the Gospel of John. You can always go back. That is, that is a great book. It's one, of my, it's one of my favorite books of the Bible. If you ever study the Gospel of John, it blows you away. I mean, it just blows you away. It's just, it can be nothing but from God. Absolutely. It's just it's amazing. It's like the book of Daniel. You know, the book of Daniel is amazing too. Amen. If you haven't studied the book of Daniel, it talks about the prophecies of things that were going to happen. They, in the, in the book of Daniel was written long before uh, these things that have happened. And uh, they actually have, I think they have copies of the book of Daniel way before these things have happened. And, uh, and it's amazing. Just absolutely amazing. All right. Praise God. All right. Let's go ahead and let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word, Lord. And, uh, and Lord, we just pray. Lord, we know that there's no condemnation before you. That uh, Romans 8, 1 says, there is now therefore no condemnation. For those who are in Christ Jesus. And so, Father, we just set our hearts before you to, to seek after you, to seek your face, Lord. How can we love more? How can we love better? Because this is what you've called us to be. This is what you've called us to do, is to love and love, love. Hallelujah. And I miss this here. Hallelujah. And we are, that you have called us to love, that our love would abound more and more and more and more. Hallelujah. Father, because your love is a light to this world. Your love is a hope to this world. Your love, it is the goodness of God that brings men to repentance. And so, Father, we pray. We want to be this light. We want this light to shine in us. We want your love to love it through us. Father, we want you to love this world through us. And so, Father, we know it's going to take some sacrifice. It's going to take some growing. It's going to take some learning. But we pray for it, Lord. We, add. we know this is your number one priority. So we want it to be our number one priority. And so we thank you for it, Father. We praise you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Praise God. All right. Well, thank you, guys. God bless you. I think this is our last one. I'm pretty, sh I'm pretty confident this will be our last one on a new identity. Uh, for those of you who are watching online, we won't have service next week. Uh, but we will be back March 1st on a Friday night. And uh, we will be, I believe we will be starting a new series. Amen. All right. God bless you guys. Have a great week.